Hi, Matthew, nice to meet you. Hi. Can, can you hear me and see me okay? Yep. Perfect. Um, so I'm Harriet Groom. I am a Director of Studies uh, for Biological and Natural Sciences at Sydney Sussex College. Um, also on the call is um, Sarah Millington Burgess, who is another Director of Studies for Biological and Natural Sciences, but she's got her camera off. She'll ask you some questions in a minute. Um, so just before we get into the kind of nitty gritty, um, we've just got some sort of procedural things to go through, I'm afraid, which are a bit boring. Um, so can you just confirm that there's no one in the room with you and that you've turned all your other devices off? Yeah. Awesome. So the interview will last about 25 minutes um, and the main part will be the academic part of the interview. Um, and then at the end, there will be an opportunity for you to ask any questions you have about the course. Um, you don't have to have a, a question, so don't worry about that. Um, we're going to ask you some questions that are related to the work that you've done in biology at school. Um, you might not be familiar with everything we've talked about. That's completely normal. Um, uh, we just want to discuss problems with you and see how you think. So if at any point something's not clear or you want something repeating, just ask. Um, and it's really great to think out loud so that we can follow your train of thought. Um, and if you don't know how to get to an answer, don't worry, we'll get there together. We may have to move on for cool. <laughs> we may have to move on to something else for reasons of time. Don't be put off by that. Um, it doesn't mean you're not doing well. It's just the time pressure. Um, also, um, these are kind of an unusual set of circumstances. So, if at any point we lose connection, then don't panic, and we'll try and resolve it, and you'll get your time back. Um, and if we get really severe technical problems, then we might have to end the interview, but we'll reschedule it. And um, either way, you won't be disadvantaged by any technical issues. So, um, and the last thing is I'm just going to remind you that you're not allowed to record any part of this interview. Is all of that clear? Does that all make sense? That's all fine, yeah. Perfect. Okay, let's get going then. So, um, it's exciting that you're excited about science and biological science. Do you, Can you think of anything that you've maybe read or seen on TV or in the news that you found particularly interesting recently? Well, it's a bit of a strange source, but um, I'm in a, a, a group on social media that share really niche biology memes. Oh, amazing. OK. Tell uh, me more. And recently, the, the meme taking the group by storm is how um, so a group of petunias were genetically modified to add more of the gene that produces the purple pigment in the 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 pestles, that, that bit. Um, in the pestles and the, the the expectation is you would get really purple petunias the petunias were white oh and it took years of research to figure out why they were white and they actually discovered really interesting things about plant autoimmune response because what was as i grasp it from memes on the internet um what appeared to be happening is the plant was detecting like all these copies of the purple gene seeing that as a problem and a waste of resources and attacking itself and destroying the purple pigment so you've got white petunias if you add more purple ah that's very interesting lots of these things come from places that have unexpected results huh very exciting oh cool um so that sounds like a really good source of information <laughs> So we're going to um, start thinking about cells and what's inside cells. Um, and so I'm just going to attempt to share my screen with you. Um, so I'm just going to try and find the right screen. Bear with me a moment. Oh, in fact, it's not open. That's why it's not sharing. Bear with me a moment. Sorry. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you an image. And what I'd like you to do is just maybe have a stab at what you think we might be looking at. You may not have seen anything along these lines before, but that's fine. Um, so you should be able to see something now. Can you see my screen? Uh, yep. Cool, I should probably put it on slideshow. Let me do that. That's a bit bigger. There we go. So any idea at all what you're looking at here? So this definitely looks like uh, 
think a microscope image. Great. Uh, my my first guess would be like this is a a cell culture. Um, with because we've got all these little dark granule sort of spots going on, mm-hmm. and that would um that would be the the cell nuclei for each cell, but it it looks a lot more kind of messy than yeah. your average cell culture. It's a bit all over the place. If I'm not lots of different sure stuff. If that's the case. Um, it being black and white's interesting because usually mm-hmm. for light microscopes you use a um like a colored stain yeah do you know can you think of any microscopes you may not have come across them but can you think of any microscopes that always give you black and white images let's see um oh there's there's two kinds of electron microscopes aren't there Hmm. because there's the uh I can't remember what they're called (laughs) no that's fine you don't need there's the 3d one and the the 2d one so yeah, so this um, is made with a an electron microscope. This image, okay. um, and it's uh, called a transmission electron microscope. And this takes a slice through whatever you're looking at, um, and throws electron at electrons at it to um, see the um, what's inside your image. Um, do you know anything about the relative um, ability of electron microscopes versus? Sort of standard light microscopes to look at things how how zoomed in oh. can they be in relative to each other well the the bottom end of light microscopy is like 150 nanometers something like that yeah, seven, yeah about 200, exactly yep yep yeah. but it's like it's tied to the wavelength of visible light mm. um with electrons they're a lot smaller a mm. hundred times comes to mind, but I'm I'm not entirely sure. That's okay. I'm not going for complete numbers, but but you're saying so electron microscopes can sort of see smaller things. Is far smaller because mm. the the effective wavelength of an electron is absolutely teeny tiny compared to visible light. Indeed. So what I'm going to tell you is because of that feature this electron microscope image is actually looking inside a cell rather than lots of different ones. So with that knowledge in mind, knowing that we're looking inside a cell, can you think of what any of these things might be that we're looking at in the image? So in the sort of like, uh, I can't really point. um... Yes, I know, this is a bit annoying, isn't it? Mm. (laughs) Sorry, you'll have to, uh, uh, can you see my mouse actually? Uh, yes, I can. Okay. So, so I sort guess of it's like this big, bigger thing, and then there's lots of these, yeah. um, uh, and this kind of this stuff. So th- that stuff, the the stuff that looks like lots yeah. of like folds almost, mm-hmm. that might be either one of the endoplasmic reticulum or the Golgi body, because you've got a lot of folded membranes going on, and that that looks like folded membranes to me. Absolutely, um, yep. Although, if it was, hang, hang on. Um, I'd I'd guess the smooth endoplasmic reticulum for that one, because yep. for the rough one, you've got all the the ribosomes stuck on it, mm. and I would think you would get a more sort of granulated look on the um the surroundings of the 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 membrane and we've got a lot of these like black spots all over the image mm-hmm. which might be the ribosomes and none of them are in there so yeah possibly so yeah as you said that's where the kind of rough endoplasmic reticulum phrase comes from is next it kind of looks yeah. like a rough uh, so yeah that's that's some really good points um, okay, so we think this is probably Golgi or Smoothie R. Yeah. Um, any other things that might look familiar? Uh, well, the big uh, bottom left-hand corner mm-hmm. mass is probably the nucleus, because I can't think of anything else that <laughs> relatively big in a cell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Indeed, Other than is. maybe a plant cell vacuole, but I think that would be very obvious in terms of scale because they are much bigger. Yeah, it's a good um, point. We're kind of in a very specific part of the cell, aren't we? So there's all there's a bit of a caveat that we we only know what we can see. Yeah. So yeah, both of those um, things are true. As for our, the sort of blobs that are scattered around the image, mm -hmm. um, there's there's a couple sort of rice grain shaped ones near the nucleus and then mm -hmm. all over the place. I would hazard a guess that they are the mitochondria because the the sort of relative scale is right. There's a lot mm -hmm. of them. Um, if we're looking at a plant cell, there might also be chloroplasts in there because they're similarly sized and very present in the cell. Um, yeah, great. Um, so the kind of these sort of, I don't know, sausagey shaped ones. Yeah. What, what about the circular ones that look kind of similar but are circles rather than what look like cylinders? I guess your classic textbook uh, picture of the yeah. mitochondria shaped like that, isn't it? So what do you reckon the cir what's going on with the circular shaped ones? I mean, it's not necessarily a different thing. It could just be one of those like cylindrical shapes, but that way. Absolutely. Because if, yeah. if, we're, if we're in a transmission electron, it, we're getting like slices. Yeah, and that's really important. We have to think about how things are made to be able to know what we're looking at. If I did, if you told me it was something different, it was a different thing, my guess would have been a, um, like, oh, what the, a vesicle? Mm hmm When you get um, the cell membrane buds off and you get, like, the, the ball with something in. Hmm, yeah. And maybe some of those empty ones in the kind of top left corner could be these. Mm, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I guess, I mean, it's difficult to tell because I haven't, I've only shown you one picture, not lots of pictures of different things, but this Scott seems to have quite a lot of mitochondria in it. Um, I don't know if you could have a guess at what sort of cell might need quite a lot of mitochondria. Well, if, any, if it's got quite a lot of mitochondria, that's a fun little sentence. Um, <laughs> It's going to be something that needs a lot of energy locally. Mm -hmm. um, that could maybe muscle, but muscle cells have a lot of other stuff going on, so I'm not sure. Um, what do you mean by a lot of other stuff going on? Like you've got the 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 long filament proteins and all the the full, mm. the, yeah, the the stuff that muscles. Uh, what the, the sarcomeres mm. that's what the unit's called the ah uh, yeah so st you you'd bits. expect to see other things in the cell um rather than what's going on here okay cool mm. it might well be just a section of a muscle cell that doesn't show those bits i i don't know what the inside of a muscle cell looks like um, mm -hmm. okay yeah muscles a good idea any any other high energy requiring cells that you could think of maybe like has it any major organ really, like the liver, the pancreas, anything that makes a lot of stuff needs a lot of energy. Mm, indeed. So what sort of stuff does a liver cell m make? Well, um, In just really broad general terms, <laughs> I don't need specific. But it, it does a lot of, um, it does a lot of chemistry on like digestion outside mm. of like your your digestive system absorbing things because uh, so, it's responsible for breaking down potential poisons and mm. you know turning breaking down alcohol breaking down um you know paracetamol any substances in your blood the liver's responsible for breaking them down and it will need energy for any uphill steps in those processes Indeed. And so what sort of molecules do biological systems tend to use to do those sorts of reactions? It's like a class of um, molecules. Enzymes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And in fact, you were spot on. So this is a liver cell and it's uh, one that's, as you say, will be making, a <laughs> um, will be making um, enzymes and secreting them and therefore need lots of mitochondria. 
Good. Okay, so we're um, coming to the end of our time now. So um, now Sarah's going to take over and ask some questions. Thank you very much.